Hi everyone and welcome along to the Ergonomically Speaking podcast, the podcast that aims to help you reduce and even eliminate work-related discomfort. I'm your host Neve Pentony of Boyne Ergonomics and thank you so much for joining me for this episode. I really hope that I'm able to give you some really useful practical advice that you can apply to reduce your own discomfort or to help those that you look after in the workplace. Now let's get started. So this episode is going to be all about the humble computer mouse and before I dive in is it computer mice is it computer mouses I'm not really sure for the purpose of this what I'm going to try and call it is a mouse device or mouse devices and that way I'm not confusing anyone and I don't get hopefully called out by the grammar police because I'm not really sure and I use them interchangeably all the time but the reason I'm talking about the computer mouse firstly it's a follow-up to the last episode that I did on keyboards because they usually tend to go together. I also liked keyboards just because the way work has changed over the last two years. People are using the mouse devices more and for longer periods than they were before and as a result I'm seeing more and more people with issues associated with the mouse use and to be honest a lot of it is down to people either holding the mouse incorrectly, operating the mouse incorrectly not taking enough breaks or actually using the wrong size or the wrong style of mouse for themselves or for any issues that they might be having. So we're all familiar with the standard mouse and it's the most common one that we see, but is it the best one? And are we all using the right one? This is what I want to cover today. So like the keyboard, the best mouse for you to use at a DSE computer workstation is the one that allows you to maintain a relaxed upper limb posture, encourages good mouse technique, reduces static and dynamic muscle loading. So as always, I can't give you an answer for what the best mouse is because it is such an individual thing. What I'm going to cover, I said today, is how we should be using your mouse if you're using a standard mouse and the different options that are available to you. So generally speaking, as I've said multiple, multiple times, when you're sitting working at the computer station, the ideal height for the surface is the one that allows you to have a straight line from the hand to the elbow when your shoulder is relaxed. So you want your elbow roughly level with the surface. As I mentioned last time, it can vary based on what you're using to type on. But generally, when you have your hand, especially a good way to, to gauge it, is to put your hand on your mouse, let your shoulder just fully relax and check for any sign of a drop in the elbow, there shouldn't be one. When we're using the mouse, it should always be close to your body. If you have to reach to the side, remove your arm from the side of your body and reach away to get hold of your mouse, you are going to cause extra work in the muscles and you're going to fatigue the muscles in the shoulder, especially if you leave your hand on the mouse for prolonged periods. So, Ideally, we want the mouse to be close to your keyboard and close to you so that your upper arm is just resting nicely by your side when you're using your mouse device. The aim of this is to reduce any strain on the shoulder. This can't always be achieved with a standard keyboard, which is why I did mention in the last episode, the compact keyboard has become more popular because it allows for better mouse position. But ideally, we want your upper arm close to your body, shoulders nice and relaxed. What I find a lot, again, I was doing a lot of DSEs over the last couple of weeks. And what I find is, as well as kind of really poor typing technique, a lot of people have really poor mouse technique. So firstly, what I'll say is when you're holding the mouse, your standard horizontal mouse that we're all fairly familiar with, your wrist should not be resting on the table your wrist should not be resting on any kind of foam wrist rest that comes on a mouse pad when your wrist is resting on the table what that normally means to me or shows me is you're either a too low for the desk or b you're holding the mouse too low down so when you're holding the mouse your standard horizontal mouse you should lay your palm at the end of the mouse and relax your fingers over it. And the fingers might come over the edge of the mouse, and that's okay. 
what I see a lot is people are holding the mouse with the tips of their fingers on the click buttons and the palm or sorry, the wrist dropping down on the table. You actually want to slide your hand a little bit higher so that you'll see a little bit of daylight between the wrist and the top of your table. So your wrist is not in contact. And again, when you're operating the click buttons in the scroll wheel, it's not the tips of your fingers that you're using to click. You shouldn't be hooking or clawing your fingers. It's the pads, your finger pads that you should be using to click your buttons and to scroll the wheel. And that's just less strain on the hand. It's less strain on the wrist and you don't have the contact stress on the wrist with your wrist resting on the surface. So your wrist itself, like with typing, it should only be in contact with the surface when you're resting in between mouse tasks. Okay, that's your positioning. Another issue I found and the people are really, really not aware of at all is they're actually using a mouse. That's the wrong size for their hand. So they do come in different shapes and sizes. And um, like I know you can get children's mice and that ah, mousing devices. Um, but there are different size computer mousing devices for different size hands. And this is even with the standard mouse. So it is really important that you're using the one that's the right size for your hand. Because if the mouse device is too small, it's going to encourage you to grip it more. And to rest your wrist on the surface and you're going to have extra tension in the hands when you're using it. If the mouse is too big it's going to cause strain in the hand and the fingers when you go to operate the buttons or use the scroll wheel. So the right size mouse will encourage you to use your larger arm muscles instead of the smaller wrist muscles. This will reduce the risk of an upper limb repetitive strain injury. So mouse size is important. But before you know what size mouse is going to suit you, you need to check the size of your hand. And I guarantee not many of you listening to this have ever done this. Most of us tend to just go with the standard mouse device that we're given either as a bundle with the keyboard or that's just given to us in the workplace. But you should measure the size of your hand to make sure you're using the right mouse. So to measure your hand, firstly, you get a ruler or a tape measure. And you measure from the crease of your wrist to the top of the middle finger. If this is less than 14.9 centimetres or 14.9 centimetres dead on, it's recommended that you use a small mouse size. If this measurement is between 15 and 17.8 centimetres, it's recommended that you use a medium mouse, which is the one we most commonly find. And if your measurement from your crease of your wrist to the tip of your finger is over 17.9 centimeters, you should be using a larger mouse. Now, with some mouse designs, so if you look, for example, at the Rock Stick Mouse 2, they actually all, because of the, the orientation of your hand, they would actually also take account of the width of your hand. And I've seen this with other mouse devices as well. So to get the width of your hand, measure your hand at the widest distance. If this measurement is between seven and nine centimeters, then you want a small to medium mouse and if it's greater than nine you will go for the larger mouse so mouse size does matter um because if you're using the wrong size mouse you're going to cause extra strain and fatigue on the muscles in the hand the wrist the fingers and the forearm and it's very likely as well that if you're using the wrong size mouse especially if it's too small you're going to be using it incorrectly because you won't be able to comfortably use it in the position that you should so when you mentioned previously, when you're holding the mouse, the base of your palm should rest at the edge of the mouse to help keep a little bit of daylight between the wrist and the surface, minimize contact between the wrist and the surface. But why do I go about this? Why am I going on about contact stress? Why is it important? If your wrist is touching the surface, be it a wrist rest or be at the desk, it's going to cause contact stress on the wrist. It's going to aggravate the tendons and the nerves in your hands. And also it encourages poor mouse technique. For me and for a lot of professionals, poor mouse technique is where we tend to see people dropping the wrist down and just moving the hand side to side, deviating the hand side to side to move the cursor back and forth. So the wrist and the forearm don't move. 
but all the mouse work is coming through the hand and all the mouse movement is coming through the hand. And these can contribute to the development of a repetitive strain injury. And we really want to avoid that. But this is something I have seen on the increase in the last two years. So a couple of things to think about when you're using your mouse. Firstly, your hand should rest on the mouse. It shouldn't be gripping it. It should just be resting, just to reduce the tension in the tendons and the muscles. When you're moving the mouse, the wrist should be straight. You should be keeping your hand in line with the forearm, using your shoulder and your elbow to actually move the mouse. If you're sitting at your desk and you've got armrests, and as long as they're at the right height, where they sit just under your elbow, not pushing your shoulder up, and they're fairly level with your surface, I find resting the elbow on the armrest actually helps encourage good mouse movement because you can use the elbow as a pivot. So you can rest the elbow on the armrest and pivot it to move the mouse instead of dropping the whole forearm, dropping the whole wrist and doing all the mouse movement through the hand. Remember, the wrist is a very small space. There's a lot of bones. There's a lot of tendons, a lot of nerves. There's a lot going on inside the wrist. So we really don't want to aggravate the tendons and nerves and cause inflammation because that's where we're going to get pain. So moving the mouse, you want to be keeping your hand in line with the forearm. To click the buttons and the scroll wheel, again, I do recommend using the pads of the fingers, not the tips, because it means that you're avoiding that clawing posture that I see in the fingers sometimes with people using the mouse. I'm often asked about mouse pads with the little wrist rest on them. I have to be honest, for me, in 99% of cases, they are a no. And the reasons are, firstly, I find most of the wrist pads are too tall. So that when the person is sitting at the right height, say, for example, the keyboard, and then they rest the wrist on the mouse pad, they get a little drop in the elbow. And so they end up having a little forward bend, a little flexion of the wrist when they use the mouse. Some of them are so tall that they're actually taller than the mouse itself which means that the hand again has to bend forward. The wrist has to flex when the hand is on the pad so that the person can operate the mouse. Because a lot of my mouse horizontal mouse devices now are quite slim line and quite sleek. They're not big and chunky. So I find the mouse pads a lot of time are too tall. And what happens then is people just rest the wrist on them. They restrict the blood flow and they're encouraging this wiggle, this hand wiggle when moving the mouse instead of actually using the arm to move the mouse. So I find if you're using the correct mouse size, if you have good hand positioning, you shouldn't need a mouse pad. If something is up and you feel that you need a mouse pad, well, maybe you need to look at the style of mouse that you're using and how long you're using it without a break and how you have your hand positioned on it and how you're moving. I feel if somebody feels they need a wrist rest, something is wrong somewhere that needs to be addressed. Because in my opinion, I find they cause more harm than good. Um, If you really do feel that you need a little something, you're much better off, I think, with going with a separate rest. You can get some that have um, ergo beads. They have bean bags, little beans inside them, and they can sit under your wrist. Or you could even fold up like a small face cloth or something like that if you really, really feel like you need something. But generally, if you're having an issue with your wrist and your hand when you're using the mouse, I will be looking at how you're holding the mouse, how you're moving the mouse, how often you're taking breaks and the style of mouse. It might just be the horizontal mouse is not for you. So definitely those are things to be considered. I'm going to have a look now at the different styles of computer mouse devices that you can get. I'll start with the one that most of us know. I'll I'll go so far as to say all of us know, which is the standard horizontal computer mouse. So this is your one with your two or three click buttons, your scroll wheel, and the hand is orientated horizontally when operating. And this is, it's the most common style of computer mouse. And it's the one most of us will have come in contact with first um, when we started using computers. They can come in a mechanical style, so you can get a mechanical horizontal mouse with a little roller ball inside. These have really been phased out. A lot of places now work with the optical or the laser mouse, which is looks the same until you flip it over underneath. 
and it doesn't have the ball. So, um, the mechanical roller mouse, I haven't seen a whole lot of them around. A lot of people have switched to the optical and the laser mouse. Um, they're still horizontal though. They still have your left and right button. They still have your scroll wheel. Um, they come wired and wireless. I personally have a problem with the wired version. I find that depending on how the workstation is set up, sometimes the wire can get caught, which leads people to kind of wiggle the mouse even more or shake it or pull it in frustration or have to bang the mouse. I've seen a lot of adverse kind of mouse movements associated with the wire. So for me, I would always go wireless if I can, if you're going for a mouse. It just takes that that factor out of it altogether. Most wireless mouse come with a USB radio frequency connection. So we get the little USB dongle in the mouse that you plug into the side of your computer, or they can have a Bluetooth connection. Um, is there much difference? Is there much difference? Usually, for me, if you're limited with the amount of USB ports, especially when you're working from home, if you're limited with the amount of USB ports that you have, I would go for the Bluetooth one. Like I know my own laptop has two, I think, USB ports. Um, and I use an external webcam. So one is always taken up by that, which leaves one free. So I tend to use a Bluetooth mouse just because it frees up a USB port in case I need it for something else. But of course, you can get extenders and um, that's fine. But if you want to free up a port, you could just go ahead and use the Bluetooth connected one. Both of them allow for better positioning, I find, and better movement compared to the wired one. The USB mouse it normally has a quicker response time from your mouse action to your cursor response. But you do need a USB port. The Bluetooth mouse is compatible, though, with a greater range of modern devices because there are now some devices that don't even have USB ports. So pros and cons to both. It depends on yourself. What I will say is the difference in response time is really really short that it really only becomes an issue in gaming in my opinion if you're just doing standard dse tasks like your emails your excel spreadsheets your presentations that kind of thing you're not going to notice the response time difference so um usb or bluetooth will be totally up to yourself i just i'm happy as long as it's wireless because i just find it allows for much better positioning um look your standard mouse it's fairly inexpensive fairly portable comes in a range of sizes, styles, colours, you know, the general principles are the same. What I will say though is definitely over the last two years, this style of mouse has become more problematic. It promotes prolonged periods of forearm pronation. So if you just there now while you're listening, just drop your hand down by your side and look at how your hand is orientated relative to your forearm and your elbow. That's your natural hand position. When you use a standard keyboard, when you use a standard mouse, you have to pronate, turn your hand in down towards the horizontal. So you have a twist from your elbow to your hand. Now, if you're using a standard mouse, your hand is in that position for prolonged periods. And because I definitely feel that the standard horizontal mouse is more prone to misuse and poor technique, um, it can absolutely increase the strain on the wrist when you're using it. And I have seen this over the last two years because people are using the standard mouse for longer than they did before and for more tasks than they did before. So while the style of mouse is the most common and is the most popular, for me, if somebody starts to complain of issues with the elbow, the wrist, the hand, the fingers, the first thing I do is change the mouse. I take that horizontal mouse away and change it for something else. And what would I be changing it to? Well, I'm going to have a look now at the alternative types of mousing device. Now, what I will say for most of them, what they will do is change your hand position so that your hand, your wrist, your forearm are under less strain. It, a lot of them will now try and orientate your hand more of a vertical angle compared to the horizontal mouse because it has been found and it is felt that that is less stressful on the hand. OK, and um, the other thing I would say about the horizontal mouse that I don't think a lot of people know is you can go in to your computer, to your settings, to your devices and change some of the settings. So you can change the cursor speed. You can change the functions of the left and the right click button. If, for example, you want to swap for a little while and give the right hand a rest 
and do use it with the left hand you can swap it around a lot of people don't know that they can actually go in and change up the settings of the mouse so have a look at that too if you're getting frustrated with the mouse or you'd like to change it up have a look at that what i'm going to look at now is the alternatives to the standard horizontal mouse so the first one i'm going to look at is the vertical mouse um the vertical mouse this is what i actually use myself all the time on the computer i use a lovely jelly comb vertical mouse all the time just because i find it's less stressful on my hand and i'm less likely to use it wrong if that makes sense which i'll explain a bit more later on so the vertical mouse it's operated most of them are operated in a similar way to the standard horizontal mouse so most of them have two or three click buttons they have their scroll wheel they can be wired they can be usb they can be bluetooth they can be left-handed, they can be right-handed. You know, what? there's a huge range of them out there now. What the big difference is, is that the click buttons, the mouse, the scroll wheel, they're all orientated at a vertical angle. And this changes the hand and the wrist orientation, allowing your hand to rest in a more kind of natural handshake position when you're using the mouse. So you've got reduced ulnar and radial deviation and or hand wiggle as I call it when you're actually moving and operating the mouse. Now, the degree of the slope varies in different models. For example, if you're looking at the um, Evoluent Vertical Mouse 4, the angle there is 80%. But if you look at the Logitech MX Vertical, which is a very popular one, that's 57 degrees. So, oh sorry, 80 degrees. Did I say 80%? Sorry, it's an 80 degree angle in the Evoluent Vertical Mouse 4 and it's 57 degrees in the Logitech MX Vertical. Now, the greater the degree of slope, the more neutral the hand position. What I would say is, if you're looking to try a vertical mouse for the first time, I would go for something with a mid slope. Any vertical slope is better than using a horizontal mouse. So I would go for, for me, a mid range slope mouse just to get started um, and see how it feels. They vary in cost based on the models. You know, there's a range, you can get them quite cheaply or you can go right up to more expensive ones. Of course, they're portable. They're quite small. I am a big fan of the vertical mouse. Anyone who's worked with me knows I'm a big fan of the vertical mouse, aside from the fact that I use it myself. What I find is when you're doing assessments on people and you're bringing new equipment, we might know what the best piece of equipment is um, and it might be something quite radical. And the problem there is, People still have to do their jobs. People still have to do their tasks. People are as busy as always, regardless of what you change in the workstation. And when it comes to the benefits that you get from a different hand position and the learning curve it takes to get used to a device, you can't really go wrong with the vertical mouse, in my opinion and in my experience. Because they operate pretty much the same way as the mouse that most people already know. All you're changing is the hand position. Now, like for example, with the contour union mouse, you can change the degree of the angle. Um, with like the contour and like with some other ones, you can program the buttons for different functions. You can change the DPI or how quick the cursor moves across the screen. Like they can be fairly well customized. But there's definitely, I have found, a smaller learning curve a shorter learning curve with a vertical mouse down to some of the alternatives and why is that good well if you're sitting there at work and you're flat out busy and you're at the same time you're trying to get to grips with this alternative device but it's slowing you down or you're not as accurate or you're making mistakes what will happen is you will just get thick and annoyed and go back to the old mouse i'll just go back to the old mouse till i do this i'll just go back to the old mouse till i do that and i just find in my experience, the longer and the sharper the learning curve, the less likely someone's going to stick with it. So I find the vertical mouse is usually my first port of call for a lot of people. And that's usually the only change they need, along with micro breaks and a few other tweaks and, and making sure good technique. I find the returns on improvement are very, very high. So I am a fan of the vertical mouse. Um, but of course, there are others available that work absolutely fabulously. And I, I use some of them myself too, and I'll go through them back now. So another one is the trackball mouse. So 
a trackball mouse. There's two different ones. So you can get trackball mouse devices that are finger operated. And you can get trackball mouse devices that are thumb operated. So the finger operated one is literally a, track, a trackball sitting in a little console. You can, it's ambidextrous. You can use it on the left or on the right. The thumb operated trackball mouse looks like a standard mouse, but slightly orientated at a vertical angle. And where your thumb is positioned, that's where the trackball sits. Now, the trackball mouse is great in areas where you've got limited space because the device doesn't actually move. The cursor is moved by the trackball. So the mouse actually stays in the one place. Because of this, then it reduces the repetitive wrist deviation movements that you see with other mice devices, which in turn will reduce fatigue and strain on the forearm and wrist. It's a good option for anyone who has difficulty holding a mouse or gripping a mouse and moving a cursor into position, such as older users or people with arthritis or inflammatory conditions in the hand. On the downside, again, there's a bit of a learning curve with them. Some people find them less accurate um, and some people find them so responsive that if you do like a tiny slight touch of the trackball, it can move the cursor away from where you want it to go. Um, I actually do have a trackball mouse that I use sometimes and depending on the task, I find it great. I, I have no issue with it um, and it is something I recommend to people on occasion and have always gotten good feedback on. But there's definitely a learning curve and I would look at what issues you're having and what tasks you do before you look for something like the trackball and decide if a finger one or a thumb one would be better for yourself. Um, probably the next most common piece of equipment that I recommend um, in the kind of mouse devices area will be your central pointing device. So this is the likes of the roller mouse, um, anything like that. They're generally speaking, they're placed directly in front of the keyboard in a central position in front of you. So you don't have any mouse device off to the side. Now, they are more expensive and they can be less portable. Um, there are options where they're integrated into keyboards. I think I covered that last week um, or last episode, sorry, in the keyboard episode. You can get devices where you have central point devices and even trackballs integrated into the keyboards. But they're a little bit more expensive. They're a little less portable and they do have a bit of a learning curve. Um, different models have different configurations, but the benefits are pretty much the same in that you're not reaching off to the side to the mouse. There is no gripping. You can use both hands to operate it because it's positioned in the middle between you. So you can kind of go between the left and the right hand as you're typing and moving, going to move the mouse. So they are really good in that sense. They reduce the workload on one side because you're splitting the load. They, as I said, they don't have any grip forces and they're great for any users who have problems holding a mouse or resting the hand in the mouse because you're getting rid of that kind of prolonged static postures to do with holding the mouse. And um, the mouse trapper is another one if you want to look it up. They have a range of different central pointing devices. Um, the principles are all the same. The one down, so this came up once and many, many, many couple of years ago. Well, many, many years ago, not that old, a couple of years ago. I was doing an assessment with somebody who had a central pointing device and it just wasn't working for them. Now, the reason for this was this person was wider than average. So even though the mouse device was positioned in front of them, they actually had difficulty kind of reaching in with their hands and operating it. And they were fine. They were having problems with their shoulders. And they were having some problems with their elbow. And it just didn't work for them. So this, like a central pointing device, yes, it is expensive. It's a really, really good option, though, as an alternative to a mouse. But it's not for everyone, which is why individual assessments and tailored advice is really really important and um, i do find a central pointing device really good a lot of the models though i will say are a little bit big for use in the home area if you're using compact keyboard or if you're using a laptop and um, in the standard office area using keyboards absolutely great and as i said and um, the mouse trapper actually has a version that's integrated into a keyboard that's really really user friendly great alternative to a mouse in my opinion, and I have recommended them quite a lot. The next one is the joystick mouse. So the joystick mouse, again, like the vertical mouse, the aim of it is that you can use this device 
with your hand and wrist in a more neutral handshake vertical position. Um, generally speaking, shaped like a game console joystick, the palm moves the cursor into position and your thumb operates a click button on the top of the joystick. Um, another good alternative, to be honest, to a standard mouse takes a bit of getting used to, but it does allow your hand to be in a more neutral handshake position. Um, easier for people to use if they've got reduced motor functions compared to a standard mouse. I just find the way it's held and the size of it in the hand makes it easier for some people who've got reduced motor capabilities. They find it easier to use. It can be less accurate compared to a standard mouse and a vertical mouse, but it's a really, really great option. It's one I always keep in the back of my mind for assessments. The pen mouse is another one. Um, it is as it sounds. It is a mouse device that is shaped like a pen. And as such, you hold it like a pen. Generally speaking, I've seen two styles of it around. Um, one is where the pen is essentially attached to a ball and the pen is moved around a ball device. Another one is where the pen is in a holder and you can take that out and move that around. So there's two general styles that I found. Look, they're portable. They're fairly inexpensive. But again, you get that improved wrist posture and you can hold it in a variety of different positions, just like you would a normal pen. So this can help reduce the strain and fatigue in the wrist and the hands. They work well generally for standard kind of point and click and drag operations. They're fine like that. What I will say with them, and I found this myself and I only have small little hands, the click buttons are small and the way they're placed, I, I find sometimes I accidentally activate buttons by accident, just the way they're orientated. I find I hit a lot of the buttons by accident. Um, they're not really suitable for anyone who has difficulty in the hands and the fingers associated with kind of gripping a standard pen or anyone who has difficulty writing. They're not really recommended in that case. Um, they're a good option. Would it be my first port of call? It wouldn't, but they exist and they're a good option. So always to be considered when I'm doing assessments, we're always considering all options that are available. Like I said before, sometimes with assessments, it's trial and error. So the device on paper that you might think would work well for someone may not. And we may have to go to another option. So the pen mouse, it's one I keep in my kit bag. It's one I show people because it is an option. Um, the next one is the external touchpad. So like the touchpad that you have essentially on your laptop, only separate. Um, well, I suppose this is like it operates the same way. Um, and when you use a touchpad on your laptop, obviously to use that not on a surface, it means your monitor is going to be too low. Raise the monitor up, touchpad's going to be too high. But some people really like the touchpad style and they like how they use it and they like how it operates. Um, and so they will use it on the laptop rather than using the mouse. But, but then, of course, as I said, like that affects the monitor position. So if you like the touchpad on a laptop you can get external ones so you can still raise that laptop up but just use a separate keyboard and a little external touchpad like it's operate you know yourself it's operate using your fingers and gentle hand movements it can be harder to control the cursor compared to other mouse devices and um, especially if you've got kind of issues in the hand or limited mobility and um, ergonomically speaking to be honest i find very little advantage using a touchpad compared to a mouse device, even compared to a standard mouse. Because what I find is you get fatigue in the hand and the fingers and the forearm because what I find people tend to just hover the hand, the arm and the hand and fingers just moving around. So you have a lot of small movements, a lot of small repetitive movements using a touchpad. Honestly, I've never, I'm trying to think, I don't think I've ever recommended an external touchpad. Now, I'm not talking about touchpads that you would use in graphic design that have come with a stylus. I'm talking about finger operated touchpads. I've never operated or recommended a finger operated external touchpad as part of an assessment to address any issues because I think there's other better alternatives out there that cause less strain and are more accurate. But they exist. And for somebody who really likes using the touchpad on the laptop, they are a great option because it means you can elevate the laptop screen and still get the benefit of using a touchpad if that's what you like. It wouldn't be for me, but if that's what you like. And the next one, 
that I'm going to talk about. Um, and it is the last one. I haven't tried it yet, but I have ordered one. So I might get back to you on that. Maybe it's the finger mouse. I've seen it. I'm intrigued by it. I've never used it, but I'm going to try it. And I've never, ever recommended one because I don't ever recommend something that I haven't tried. Um, but I'm including them here because they exist. I want to consider them. So what I found is they come in two styles. So you've got the optical finger mouse that essentially straps to your finger and it's on your finger as you're typing. Or you've got the trackball finger mouse, which kind of essentially you put your finger in and you, you move the thumb around to operate the trackball. So the index finger holds it in position. The thumb operates the trackball and the click buttons. Pros, look, they're super portable. They're inexpensive, you know, minimal strain on the wrist and you don't need a surface. So they'd be great in presentations. I imagine that's that's really where I would see them um, kind of coming into their own would be in a presentation um, field or a presentation environment. Using the computer, I'm not really sure where the benefit would come from. Um, by all accounts, and they're not as accurate and they can be quite difficult to get used to and they can cause increased strain on the digits that are actually operating them. But um, I might get back to you on that because I have ordered one and I'm intrigued to see how it will work. I can't see myself recommending one. Um, as I said, maybe in a presentation environment or something like that or a teaching environment. But um, yeah, to be continued, I think, on the finger mouse. So look, as with everything in ergonomics, as ergonomics being what it is, you know, we're taking into account the person, the task, the equipment, the environment, the suitability of the equipment. It's directly related to the tasks that you're using it for, the environment where it's being used and the needs and the issues of the user. Sometimes, as I said, it is trial and error to get the best solution, especially with mouse devices, because that can be very individual. Um, and the best solution on paper might not be the one that works from the per for the person's point of view. But there are loads of options to be considered. And for me, I don't have a favorite, favorite mouse. I would tend to go for the vertical mouse as usually my port of call for a lot of issues. And I find that that normally resolves a lot of people's problems, just especially over the last two years with the increase in mouse use and the increased time and the increased tasks. But there are loads of options available. And I always keep them in my back pocket when I'm doing assessments because it's all so individual. You know, somebody with an issue with the finger might be looking for one particular kind of mouse. Somebody has an issue with their wrist. And then we always ask, what do you do with the mouse? How often do you use it? How long do you use it? Are you more mouse than keyboard? You know, and always looking at positioning and looking at technique and looking at hand placement. But as I said, it's so um, individual as with everything in ergonomics. But luckily, in this day and age, we have loads of mouse device options available to us that we can use for anyone who either wants to be a little bit more comfortable when they're using the mouse or to address any issues that they may be having. So that's it for the mouse. Um, as always, if you want to get in touch with me, my email address is info at boyinergonomics.ie. I am going to have a blog post on the mouse, um, just like I did with the keyboard. I will put a link in the show notes because I will have visuals of all these different types of devices up on the blog post. So you can go on and have a look and see what I'm talking about when I say finger mouse, joystick mouse, this kind of thing. You can actually have a look um, or check out my social media because that's what I've been covering for the last two weeks is the humble computer mouse. So if you want to check me out, I'm on Instagram at Boyne underscore ergonomics and on Twitter at Neve underscore Pentany, where you will again, you'll see graphics and visuals of all these different type, types of mouse devices. So I leave it there for this episode. And until next time, everybody stay well.